You're listening to the Unstoppable Team Podcast, episode number 37. Welcome to Unstoppable Team, the podcast for teenagers, parents, and teachers. My name is Kevin Mincher. Every week, we will bring you an inspirational person or message to help you experience more success and happiness. Thanks for hanging out with us. Let's get this party started. Hello, Unstoppable Nation. It's Kevin here. Welcome to the show. Here in my home country, the United Kingdom, in the United States of America, Canada, and indeed other countries around the world, high school students right now are preparing for their final tests and exams. And it's for that reason that I felt that today would be a great use of our time if I shared with you three steps to achieve better grades. This last week, I was back in my old school visiting and I presented one of my seminars to the students there that are about to face these challenges of final tests and exams. And uh, I had a conversation at the end of that seminar with one of the students. Let's say her name was Charlotte to protect her real identity. And Charlotte was talking about how she felt under lots of pressure, how really she'd been a, a good student so far. You know, she had good attendance in school. She'd take good notes in class, had positive relationships with her teachers, asked lots of questions. She's a good student. You know, she's done her homework, extra studying in the evening and weekends, but she's petrified about the challenges that she's about to face. She's worried about what happens if she doesn't perform at her best under pressure. What happens if she fails? And so we sat down and had a, a little conversation, giving us some tips and some ideas about what she could do to perform at her best and achieve more in these forthcoming tests and exams. And in this episode, what I want to do is share with you some of the things that I said and give you those three steps to achieve better grades. You probably already know that I've worked with more than 250 schools, colleges and universities over the last two decades. Now that gives me a vast amount of experience and a depth of understanding about what's happening on the front line in education. It gives me an awareness of what educators are doing to help students achieve more. And it concerns me when I see time and time again the unhealthy obsession, in my opinion, that we have with the national curriculum. Now, it makes logical sense that if you want to get better grades in tests and exams, then if you spend more time focused on the curriculum, where the questions are going to come from in those tests and exams, that if I understand more of that curriculum, then I'll probably get better grades. That makes logical sense. The problem is that we're not just logical beings. We certainly have that capacity, but there's a greater depth to being a human. We're emotional beings too. And the fact is, is there's never been an easier time at any point in history to learn more. We've never had a greater understanding than right now. We've never had more knowledge about how human beings learn. We know more about the brain today than ever before. We know more about the nervous system. We know more about how human beings learn and master information, learn and master skills, learn and master the national curriculum. And despite that, we still don't have 100% of our students graduating and getting better grades. We're, we're far from it. Also, we've never had greater access to different platforms upon which we can learn. You know, we don't just have to go to school and learn from a teacher or read from a book in order to understand the national curriculum and learn the stuff that's going to come up in finals tests and exams. Nowadays, the access to knowledge is easier than ever before. You can watch YouTube videos, you can download apps, you can surf the internet, you can learn via social media, you can listen to podcasts, you can read blogs. It's never been easier. And yet, despite the fact that we've never known more about how human beings learn, and despite the fact that it's never been easier to access the information that's in the national curriculum, still, here in my own country, last year, around about 64% of students got the required grades in English and maths at the age of 16. 
By that point in time, they were in year 11 of school, going to school for 11 years of their lives. They'd been attending school, if they had 100% attendance, for 195 days a year. And they were in school for around about six hours a day, of which five hours of those were in structured lessons. And all of that is paid for, and students get it for free because it's been covered by the taxpayer. I mean, it doesn't get any easier than this. The provision is phenomenal. And yet we're still massively underachieving. So what's missing? Why? Why, when we've never known so much about the brain, never had it easier to access the information, the whole thing's paid for, why is it that still students don't achieve, on average, as high as they should be doing? What's going on? That's what this episode is all about. Here are the three steps that you can use to achieve better grades. These three steps plug the gaps of the bits that I feel are currently missing in a lot of schools. Not all schools. I'm making a gross generalization here. I realize that. And I know that there are many schools around the world, not just in my country, that are doing a phenomenal job of empowering young people. Now, if if you're a parent that's listening, if you're a student that's listening, indeed, if you're a teacher that's listening... I think you'll find these three steps from my Get the Grade You Want seminar to be really helpful. I mentioned earlier on that we're not just logical beings. There are a greater depth to what makes us tick. So that's why step one is that you've got to unleash your desire. Students won't learn anything until a part of them wants to learn it. Having a hunger Having a desire to learn is a critical factor in the learning process. As the old saying goes, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink it. And you can lead a student to the national curriculum, but you can't make them drink it. You can't make them learn it. They have to want it. And the problem is, is that all too often students have been mollycoddled. They've been spoon fed. They've been fetched and carried. They haven't had to use their initiative. They've lost perspective on what a privilege it is to be able to have the free education that they get in developed countries like we have here in the United Kingdom. And they often moan and complain about having to do the things that millions of students around the world wished that they had the opportunity to have, but they can't because they were born in the wrong country. There are students that are sat on dusty floors across Asia, Africa and in parts of South America wishing that they could go to school but never getting the chance to. Or the school that they get to go to has nowhere near the level of curriculum, technology, and quality of teaching that's available. You see, desire, not taking something for granted, not wishing it was over already, not hoping that, you know, we can just get through this as quickly and as painlessly as possible, but actually wanting to immerse yourself in the learning process, having a desire to make yourself better than you ever were before, more skillful, more knowledgeable, more capable than ever before. When you have that desire, then, and only then, will a student have a chance of fulfilling their potential. But whilst there's a teacher at the front of a class trying to ram the national curriculum down a student's throat that doesn't really want to even be in that class, you're on a hiding to nothing. As we might say here, you're peeing in the wind. It's not going to happen. So whose responsibility is it to help students have a greater desire to learn and master the elements that are in the national curriculum? Well, in my opinion... It's a co-responsibility, a joint responsibility between the parent, the teacher and the child themselves. Let's start with the child themselves. Folks, teenagers listening right now, you've got to want it. And the way you'll want it more is when you understand how important education is in the modern world. When you start to appreciate the competitive economy and the jobs market that you're going into, when you start to realise that you're not just competing against the local students in your high school, you're not just competing against the high school students and college students in your region, in your state, in your county, in your area, or even in your nation, when you realize that it's a global economy. And one day when you start applying for jobs and careers and you want to get your dream job and career, you're competing against literally every other human being on the planet. And your education standards 
And I'm not just talking about grades here. I'm talking about your level of competence. You see, grades are an indicator of your competence. And if you're good at stuff, we can give you a good job. If you're not good at stuff, we can't give you a good job. And let's be frank here. If you got everything paid for, for 11, 12, 13 years of your life to go to school, where you got 195 days a year of education, you got thousands of learning hours paid for, and you couldn't pass English and mathematics, when you got all that help and all that support, and all you had to do was learn the curriculum. If you can't succeed at that, if only 64% of the students in my country can get the required grade, it's just not good enough, is it? If you can't pass that and succeed at that, why would I think that you could succeed in my business? Why would I give you a job? Why would I trust you with my customers, with my product, with my brand, with our services? If when you were given a chance to learn English, math, science, and all those other things, that you couldn't be bothered and you couldn't master it. I mean, can you imagine going to your dentist and your dentist fixing 64% of the teeth (laughs) that they were presented with. Would you be happy with that as a standard? Can you imagine if your car broke down, you took it to your mechanic and your mechanic fixed the car 64% of the time? Would you be happy with that? Of course, the answer is no. 64% is nowhere near good enough. And I don't know what the standards are in your country or where you're listening right now, but I haven't found any country anywhere around the world where 100% of the students are getting 100% of the questions right. It's not happening. Now, you might say, Kev, that's utopia. It's impossible. I understand that. But we've got to be doing better than we are. And it starts with having desire. And it starts with the student finding a fire inside where you want it, where it's a burning, driving passion and a desire to learn more, to master more, to become more capable. Then it moves to the parents. That mum and dad or carer, whoever plays that parental role, has to help to motivate and inspire their child on a daily basis. It's not enough that, you know, when school's coming back, that you have a little rallying the troops talk at the end of the summer break, and that that should be sufficient to motivate your child throughout the year. It's a daily, weekly, monthly process. So my question is, what are you doing as a parent to help motivate and and inspire your child, your son, your daughter, to want to learn more, master more, become more capable? What statistics do you show them on a weekly basis about the importance of education? What, what are you helping them learn about the economy, the jobs market, and where it's likely to move in the next five to ten years? And therefore, the grades that they need to get to take advantage of the opportunities that are going to exist in the future. What inspirational quotes do you discuss at dinner time? What thought-provoking TED Talks videos, YouTube videos, and movies and documentaries are you watching as a family each month? To help motivate your child so that they value their education, so they have a greater desire to want to succeed. And then the teachers, the educators that are listening. What do you do in the first five minutes of every single lesson to make your lesson relevant? To make your students' ears prick up, to get them curious, to get them engaged, so that they feel like they now want to learn from you? What are you doing to build your relationship with them? Where your child, your students feel like that they know you, they like you and they trust you and they want to learn from you. Or are you just coming in at that out of date mode of thinking that I'm the teacher, you're the student, I'm in charge, you need to shut up and listen. Are you still falling for that old, 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 old mistake? Or are you using that classroom environment of yours? Are you playing clips out of podcasts? Are you sharing little inspirational YouTube videos or animations. What are you doing at the beginning of a lesson, the middle of a lesson, even at the end of a lesson, as you draw the conclusions, the plenary, and you're consolidating the learnings from that lesson? Are you showing the relevancy of how what you're teaching links to real life, to the student's current relationships, to their current family situation? Are you linking it to their lifetime goals, what they want to achieve in their future career? Or are you just focused on the curriculum? So in my opinion, desire is the first step. And it's the student, it's the parent, and it's the teachers together on a weekly basis, on a daily basis, on a lesson by lesson basis that must unleash that desire before learning a mastery 
will happen. Step two is all about belief. If you want to achieve better grades in school, you've got to believe that the journey is possible. In fact, this is not just achieving more in school, it's about achieving anything. That There has to be a part of your brain, there's got to be a part of your soul that believes the journey is possible before you'll ever embark on the journey. And whether you want to become a, a professional athlete, whether you become a, 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 an award-winning entrepreneur, a best-selling author, a an incredible doctor or nurse, a phenomenal architect or construction worker. doesn't matter what your goals are. You have to believe. Part of you has got to think, I can do this before you ever will. And a part of a student's mind has to believe that they can succeed in high school tests and exams before they ever will. And so the question is, well, how do you do that? How do you believe that you can do something before you've actually done it. How do you how do you get that sense of certainty inside? And I'll say to the students, the teenagers that are listening, that's a gift that you have to give to yourself. Students, you have to go to work on your self-belief every day. You know, I used to take more than a half an hour to get ready for school in the morning. I can't tell you how much time I spent looking in the mirror sorting my hair out, you know, making sure that I was looking good before I went out to school. And I'm going to say, if you spend half an hour or an hour every day doing your hair, doing your makeup, primping your clothes or whatever it is, grooming routines that you have, you know, your skincare or whatever it is, for every minute that you spend on that, you need to spend a minute on your self-belief. You've got to develop that certainty inside that self-confidence, that self-trust. Now, parents are something that you can do to help this process. Four words. I believe in you. Make it your task, parents that are listening right now. In fact, teachers that are listening right now, make it your task to at least once every day, say to your child, say to your student, I believe in you. I believe in you. And if you say that to a child over and over again, if you say that to a teenager over and over again, sooner or later, that young person will start to believe it. I believe in you. Here's another set for you. You can do it. Get those four words. You can do it. When your child is heading out to school in the morning, you can do it, son. You can do it, daughter. When your students are in your classroom and they're fretting and they're panicking, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. They're the things that the adults can do to develop the self-belief of the student. Now, as a young person, just change it from you to I. I can do it. I can do it. And if you repeat that affirmation, if you repeat that mantra over and over again inside your head, I can do it. I can do it. When you say that to yourself, when you repeat that phrase, when you're in a classroom and you're looking at a problem and you can't solve it, when the curriculum isn't making any sense to you whatsoever, when your eyes have glazed over and you're looking at the teacher, but you're not really seeing them because in the back of your mind, you're thinking, I haven't got the foggiest idea what you're talking about. In that moment of doubt, in that moment of confusion, in that moment of frustration, say to yourself, I can do it. And as you say to yourself, I can do it, over a while, over the days, over the weeks, over the months of repetition, you'll condition your nervous system to believe in yourself. And when you believe in yourself, then you'll get on the journey. Then you'll start to take advantage of the opportunities and the curriculum that's around you. Step one, you've got to have that desire. Step two, you've got to believe in yourself. And then that leads us to step three. Step three is all about having strategies. What do I mean? Well, we got that obsession on the curriculum. We got that focus on, here's what you need to learn. In fact, my teachers would say to me all all the time, Kev, you need to learn this. They'd say, Kev, this is going to show up in your tests. Kev, you need to remember this. It's going to come up in your exams. I was like, yeah, thanks. How do I do that? They would tell me what to learn But the teacher rarely taught me how to learn. 
They didn't give me strategies. My mum and dad would push me out the door each day. Go to school. Go learn something. You need to learn stuff. Yes, I know. But how do I do that? So what we need to do is we need to equip ourselves with effective learning strategies. And a strategy, my definition of a strategy is simply a proven method, a proven technique that consistently achieves a specific result. It's proven. It's been tried. It's been tested. There's evidence that we know that it works. I don't have to reinvent the wheel. Too many students are sat at their desk in school or at home at night looking at the national curriculum but not having the foggiest idea how to get that information into the brain, how to process that information so that they understand it and then how to recall that information when it comes to a test or an exam situation or another place in the future when they need to use it, whether that's a job interview or some other area of their life. We have to, have to, have to equip young people with effective learning strategies. That starts with active listening and active observation. It progresses with, as you're receiving that information now, because you can actually hear it and observe it, that you get better questioning techniques so that you know that when you're confused and you don't understand something, you know what questions to ask to clarify the situation. Then you've got to get good at note-taking. So once you've clarified the situation, you've got to record it. You've got to document it. You've got to take the notes. And there are many different ways to take the notes. I'm not going to go into them all here right now. It's just really important that you have effective note-taking strategies. Then when you've got the note-taking strategies, it's important to have critical thinking skills. Those strategies. How do I analyze? How do I evaluate? How do I come to my own conclusions? More and more tests and exams want students' opinions on something. It's not just about memorizing facts. It's about forming quality evaluation, conclusion, good judgment. And if you've never been given strategies about how to think critically and analyze stuff, then inevitably you're going to struggle. The next set of strategies you need are creative thinking skills, where you can solve problems, where you can take an issue, a challenge, a blank sheet of paper, and you can design a solution for that. More and more tests and exams are focused on creative thinking skills because they are employability skills that are going to be needed for a lot of jobs and careers in the future. So you've got to have those strategies. And there are all kinds of techniques that you can use here, whether it's Edward de Bono, six thinking hats, whether it's the Disney technique that I share through my seminars, there are all kinds of different creative thinking skills. You've got to have them. And if you don't have those strategies, then you can't expect a student to learn and master the national curriculum and do well in tests and exams. And finally, we get to that area of memory strategies, effective recall. It's not just about putting the information in, you've got to get it back out again when you're in that test or an exam. Have you equipped yourself with proven memory techniques or are you just making them up as you go along? And if you're just making it up, why would you do that? Why would you make your job harder than it needs to be? When there are proven memory techniques out there that have been tried, that have been tested, and we know that they work, why haven't you equipped yourself with those yet? They're freely available in podcasts, on YouTube, and all kinds of other places. Get them. Learn them. Use them. So there we have it, folks. We have a three-step strategy for improving grades in school and for achieving more in school. Step one you got to have that desire and want to learn. Step two, you got to believe that the journey is possible. Step three, got to have the proven strategies. And when you loop that together with the national curriculum, now you've stacked the odds of success in your favour. I hope that you found these three steps to achieving better grades in school. I hope you found it useful. I want to give you a little gift to help you with this process. First of all, if you want to get access to today's show notes, you can do so at unstoppableteen.com forward slash 37. Today's episode is episode 37, so go to unstoppableteen.com forward slash 37. That's where you'll find a summary of the three steps that you can use to achieve better grades. It's also where you'll find my little gift that I want to give to you. As you know, I said in step three, you've got to have effective strategies. Now, strategies are the basis of habit. It's not just about knowing this stuff. It's about doing it consistently 
on a daily basis. It's about embedding it in your routine. So just like you go to math, English, science, history, geography, economics, whatever lessons you're studying, as you go to classes and as you learn the national curriculum every day, it's important that every day you plug in your desire. It's important that every day you're doing things that will help you manage your self-belief. It's important that every day you're learning those strategies that will help you succeed. And so what I want to do is give you a free download. I created a study guide and it's called the 21 Effective Study Skills. That's that third section. You know the strategies? It's the 21 Effective Study Skills. And, you know, a lot of students keep telling me, Kev, I I, I just don't know how to study. I'm thinking, how can this be the case? They've been going to school for 11 years. What have their teachers been teaching them if they haven't been teaching them how to learn? Anyway, the students say to me, I don't know how to study. I don't know how to revise. I don't know how to prepare for a test or an exam. So we created this free guide, this free download. It's a PDF. It's my gift to you. You can have it completely free of charge. It's called the 21 Effective Study Skills plus the two super study strategies. So I want to give that gift to you. Essentially, you're getting 23 study techniques that can help you prepare for tests and exams. Get it for free. Simply go to unstoppableteam.com forward slash 37. When you go to where the show notes are, there'll be a link right there where you can download the 21 effective study skills. I hope that you found this entire episode useful. If you did, please, we're on a mission to help a million young people experience a better quality of life. And if you want to experience a better quality of life, you've got to get a better quality of education. So if you know a student that has got some tests or exams coming up, please give them this podcast to listen to. Share this episode. Send them the link. You know, send them to unstoppableteam.com forward slash 37. Or send them the link via iTunes or via SoundCloud. Those are the same places where you could subscribe to the show. You know, if you want to get more hints and more tips about how to get better grades in school, or indeed if you want more hints and tips about how to have a better life, then become a subscriber. You can do that on iTunes, you can do it on SoundCloud, or you can do it at unstoppableteen.com forward slash subscribe. You know, if you sign up and you join there every week, we will send you directly to your email inbox the link to the latest episode. And you probably know, if you've been listening before, that we interview top performers, you know, professional athletes, millionaire entrepreneurs, best-selling authors, high achievers, and we ask those people how they do it. I also, if you've listened to previous podcasts, you'll know that I answer listeners' questions. So if you've got a challenge that you're facing, if there's an issue, I don't know what it might be, maybe you're getting bullied, you know, maybe, maybe you've experienced some breakup in your family and it's having a negative effect on you, you know, Maybe you've got some other struggles that you're currently confronting and you want a bit of expert guidance. If that's the case, please get in touch. You can send your questions to us via the usual social media channels at Unstoppable Team. You'll find us on Twitter. You'll find us on Instagram. Of course, you'll find us on Facebook too. But if you want to keep your question private, you can ping me an email. And you can do that podcast at Unstoppable Team. Dot com. That's podcast at unstoppableteen.com. I'm here to help and we're willing to go the extra mile to help you have a better life. So please do get in touch, share the episode, pass it on, spread the word, give it to parents, give it to educators, give it to the teenagers. And after you've done that and use the stuff that was in this session, I'll look forward to returning again next week with another episode where we'll help you become truly unstoppable. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.